kingfishers are common here, and the concert of the tree frogs can be heard once more. You can watch the courting display of damselflies. Nature's diversity has returned to the floodplains of the Upper Rhine. Many people like to spend their leisure time in these wild, romantic surroundings. It looks like untouched nature. But appearances are deceptive, because this landscape lies in an artificially created flood retention area. Much has changed here since Baden-Württemberg adopted a new approach to flood control. The effort is immense. Engineering structures, controllable floodplains, and kilometer-long embankments. Approximately one billion euros are being invested in flood control along the Upper Rhine. But why are such extensive flood control measures necessary? One of the main reasons is the weather in the catchment area of the upper reaches of the Rhine in Switzerland. Especially in spring, when the snow melts, large amounts of water are released. And if there is heavy rainfall at the same time, the streams flow faster and join together to form raging torrents. Then the Rhine and its tributaries are swollen with floodwaters. Climate change may cause heavy rainfall and flooding to occur more frequently. The situation becomes more acute when two flood waves meet. The resulting floods are of catastrophic dimensions. They threaten life and may cause damage that can run into billions. Climate change increases the danger, but the real causes lie in the past. In former times, the Upper Rhine had numerous side arms and was bordered by alluvial forests. There was plenty of space for the river's floodwaters to spread out unhindered. In the middle of the 19th century, the Rhine was straightened and the riverbed deepened. Additional agricultural land became available and river navigation was expanded. Today, the Rhine is one of the most important inland waterways in Europe. The weirs changed the Rhine forever. The embankments were constructed directly along the course of the river. The water could no longer flow across the floodplain. The natural retention areas for flood water were lost. Today, the towns and industrial developments have expanded right up to the river banks. If there is a flood, the lives of many people would be in danger and an estimated six billion euros of damage could occur. The cities of Karlsruhe, Mannheim and Ludwigshafen and their vicinity are at risk. What can be done to preserve human lives and reduce the damage? The countries bordering the Rhine which are affected, France and Germany, signed a flood control agreement in 1982. The aim is to restore the flood control situation as it was before the constructions. To this end, Baden-Württemberg has developed the Integrated Rhine Program, IRP. This program provides for a total of 13 retention areas between Basel and Mannheim. Some of them have already been completed and are ready for use, but there will only be adequate flood protection when all 13 have been implemented. The most important measure is the construction of controllable retention areas known as polders. 
The polder is an area surrounded by dikes that can be flooded on purpose if a flood wave is approaching in order to lower the peak level of the wave. Flooding a polder causes the groundwater level to rise. To ensure that the surrounding built-up areas are not at risk, wells and pumping stations keep the groundwater level low. The towns and villages are thus protected. The pumping station at Altenheim has already proved itself in active service. The pumps are regularly serviced and tested. Four times a year they're switched on for 24 hours. Independent pumping systems provide additional safety. A total of 20 cubic meters of water per second can be pumped through the enormous pipes. Rakes clear the inflowing water of plant material which has been washed up. Then the water can flow in freely and be pumped away. More than 20 years ago, the Altenheim polders near Neuried, south of Kehl, were put into operation as retention areas. Within the polder dikes, there is woodland as well as meadows and fields, a gravel pit and bathing lakes. The lakes in particular are a popular leisure destination for the local population. Many visitors from nearby France come here to go swimming, snorkeling and diving. The water quality has been checked. It's not affected by the polder operations. Most of the polders are covered with woodland. The alluvial forests in particular are valuable habitats for countless species. Birds like the black kite and the middle-spotted woodpecker live here. Alluvial forests are well adapted to flooding. They even depend on it, because without flooding, the alluvial forest will gradually turn into a normal deciduous forest. A deciduous forest, however, would be damaged by flooding. The white willow forest near Rastatt is one of the last areas of natural floodplains on the Upper Rhine. This is a place where time and again the Rhine can flow naturally into the alluvial forest. White willows are typical trees found in alluvial forests. They can survive with wet feet for up to 300 days a year. Other trees, oaks and elms for example, can survive flooding for at least 100 days. The dikes prevent the river water from flowing directly into the polders. The natural dynamics of the polders have thus been lost. So this is simulated by ecological flooding. The inflow is controlled and regulated from the control center Kehl Strasbourg. The amount of water available varies considerably because it depends directly on the water levels in the Rhine. Only when the Rhine exceeds a certain discharge level is the intake opened. Then ecological floods are allowed to flow into the polders. It's an impressive sight that many people like to watch. The intake is increased in stages. First of all, the current and the amount of water increase only in the old river meanders. When the water level of the Rhine is so high that more water can be allowed to flow into the polders, it seeks alternative routes. Dry river channels spring back into life and fill with water. The ground within the polders is thus mostly only partly flooded. The polders are only flooded completely when the water levels are exceptionally high. Where the water levels rise, the animals must retreat to safety. Many of them just climb up a floor and wait for the floods to subside. For the inhabitants of the upper story, the water flooding the forest is rather unimportant. 
the great spotted woodpecker and the shy green woodpecker are unperturbed. Dead wood and scrub are important because they can serve as a welcome life raft. The colony of ants tries to save itself as best it can. And this beetle can only wait patiently. Normally he would eat the snail. Over time, the ecological flooding encourages the growth of plants and trees which can stand water. A living alluvial forest is formed. Many animal species are also able to adapt when the water repeatedly floods the woodland. Then the ecological and economic damage caused by flooding are reduced to a minimum. The water mostly disappears a few days later. The mud which remains doesn't look very pretty, but it contains valuable nutrients for the plants in the alluvial forest. It's not only the mud which is left behind. There are also wet hollows and ponds. In order to prevent a plague of gnats, the water is checked for insect larvae and treated accordingly. The insecticide BTI is used, since this special bacterial protein only kills mosquito larvae. It can be necessary to spray the insecticide from the air when large areas were flooded. In this case, an ice granulate containing the effective protein crystals is used. The insecticide campaign is organized by CABS, the Communal Action Association for the Control of Gnats. In spite of the scale of the operation, the costs are less than one euro per year for each affected inhabitant. In the polders, the floods create new islands of gravel and the accumulation of mud is washed away. Many species of fish need a clean gravel bed to spawn. And so the common naze and the barbel profit from the washed gravel. The polders have also become a paradise for kingfishers, which find plenty of food among the young fish. The force of the water also creates steep new river banks. The kingfishers dig their nests in steep banks like this. About ten pairs of kingfishers are now thought to live and breed successfully in the Altenheim polders. Floods are a natural event and cannot be prevented. But the damage they cause can be kept to a minimum. The specific activities of the integrated Rhine program not only provide flood protection, they also create a landscape of natural beauty with living alluvial forests. The retention areas provide countless opportunities for recreation, nature study, leisure sports or a family outing. And they have also proved their value in an emergency. During the 100-year floods in 1999, the peak flood wave was reduced by 24 centimetres. That was sufficient to save Karlsruhe and Speyer from flooding. But these towns on the Rhine are still dependent upon the solidarity of the inhabitants of the Upper Rhine. Because comprehensive protection will only be provided when all the IRP projects have been realised. Only then will our children also be able to face the future with confidence?